Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Trek Cannon. Now, for those of you who uh, have seen a few of my videos, you know I don't put them out regularly. The reason is, is because Star Trek isn't on regularly. Now, I wanted to do some videos, um, just kind of going, you know, starting at the original series and kind of episode by episode, um, you know, doing a commentary on them and seeing how um, the things that happen in those episodes affect uh, future episodes and future storylines and uh, future canon, as I should say. But um, again, my son is trying to help me with my production. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, uh, we're we, we trying to get that. We're we trying to get the nice little wall of action figures and stuff behind us. It's just gathering all my Star Trek memorabilia into one spot because I have Star Trek stuff everywhere. Because. I've lived everywhere, so I have Star Trek stuff in But anyway, um, today's video. Today's video is on upcoming series, Star Trek Picard. Now, I've been kind of refraining from making a video on this because I wanted to accumulate information about what the show was going to be about, uh, well, um, what the leaks of the show was going to be about, uh, the direction they was going to try to go, see the trailer, you know, kind of study the trailer a little bit and do all that kind of stuff. Um, I have... So, I'm going to have to admit, when Star Trek Picard first, uh, when I first heard about it, um, I was excited because I knew that um, Patrick Stewart wasn't going to go back to the storyline unless, uh, unless, just like he said, it, it furthered the story, further his character. So, I've been having an opportunity to read up on it and, and, and all of that, and I'm going to have to say um, if if the Borg is a central feature in Star Trek Picard, I'm a I, I, I'm not gonna like it much. I think that they would have done a disservice to um, Canon. Um, why? Why do I think that? Well, the Borg to me, to me, and I think to a lot of people who uh, follow Star Trek Canon and seeing the Borg in their original iterations before, say Voyager, right? But the Borg were designed to be the most deadly threat, not only the Federation have seen, but ever to the Star Trek realm that wasn't um, an omnipotent being or some type of uh, extraordinary uh, power, time bending, a dimension reality bending uh, uh, entity or something like that. But as far as technology based, um, a technology based civilization, biological, uh, the Borg were the were the biggest threat, you know. They kind of got uh, I wouldn't say dumbed down, but I, they kind of got um, reduced in that threat level from the series Voyager, and I can understand why. You know, Voyager was going through a, uh, you know a rough time trying to find his footing, bringing in the Borg. Uh, done the series, did the series great. You know, it introduced Seven and Nine. Uh, one of my favorite characters ever is One. Um, I love that dude. They, I, they, I really wish they would have kept him, but he was way OP. So, um, you know, one, but each ab and, you know, the kids. But Voyager kind of made, because of the situation of Voyager, an intrepid class vessel is not going to make it through Borg space unin. Un, 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 Unassimilated. We'll put it that way. It's just not gonna happen. A galaxy thirty. What was it? Thirty-eight vessels. No, forty-eight. Wolf three five nine. Uh, destroyed. And this intrepid class vessel by one cube. And this intrepid class vessel. Okay. Anyway, besides the point. But um, so having the Borg as the main protagonist in this is. Um, I don't think. I don't think that would have. I don't think that was a good thing. And from what I'm hearing, this uh, the girl who's supposed to see uh, Picard and you know need his help and all that kind of stuff. She may have some kind of Borg uh, origins or something like that. But after the events of Voyager, the Borg couldn't be that big of a threat. As a matter of fact, why would the Romulans be trying to be trying to um, you know go through Borg technology? To me, that really makes no sense because anything that they get from the Borg ship. Wouldn't help them against the Federation. The Federation has weapons and shielding, you know, that's specifically designed 
you know, to make Borg, uh, Borg technology uh, ineffective. You know, look at Endgame, Voyager, okay? What Janeway, what Admiral Janeway brought back. So I don't see the, I don't see the logic of, as far as canon goes, of having the Borg be any kind of threat now, you know, after Voyager did what they did. So, um, maybe the Romulans want to, you know, figure out nano, you know, nanoprobes and, or nanites and, you know, kind of manipulate them to be better or different, but I still don't see how that would work because Romulans aren't as advanced nearly as the Borg are. So, it, what would they do? So, I didn't like the direction of, of that. I didn't like introducing the Borg that way. And then to have one of your most strong and fearsome enemies ever introduced in the Star Trek be held uh, captive by the Romulans you know the Romulans are, you know don't get me wrong Romulans is awesome but get no 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 you're not gonna hold a Borg cube in the stasis field it's just not gonna happen nothing about Borg I mean nothing about Star Trek canon would suggest to me that that would work okay so already they they, they already that's upsetting me a bit um another thing Data's gonna be in it um uh, Worf is supposed to be in it now. Um, Deanna Troy and uh, Commander Riker is supposed to be uh, in it. Um, it seems like a Star Trek The Next Generation light, you know? And the thing is, is that The Next Generation specifically has several episodes where they went into the future and, uh, you know, discuss future events. You know, hell, all good things did an outstanding job of that. But, that you know, one could argue that that was a possible future and not uh, an established future, as Doctor Who likes to say time is a wibbly-wobbly thing. But, um, so, I'm not really, I'm not really feeling that. But, you know, in all honesty, you know, what I was expecting from the Picard series would have been, um, them touching on his uh, Eremonic Syndrome, I believe it was pronounced, the Eremonic Syndrome that uh, he was having, uh, if they were able to, uh, you know, um, that would have been a great opportunity for them to go into, to dive into, uh, you know, stories about disability, coping with disability, you know, uh, mental illness, stuff like that, which is very prevalent, you know, in today, in today's society. But so far, they haven't mentioned anything about his Eremonic, uh, Eremonic Syndrome. Um, it could have, uh, you know, that could have been like um, one of the one of the features of the series. Uh, his archaeology, um, you know, it, is, you know, Picard isn't as uptight as most would believe, you know, based on, uh, you know, based on most people's just kind of looking at the next generation. Picard, I could totally see him being a bad boy. Hell, he started off as a bad boy. That's why he has a, a jacked up heart. He has an artificial heart. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, you know, hell, of all the women, he was attracted to Vash, the thief, okay, the thief, the con lady, you know, to, I'm sorry, Vash, so, Picard has a streak in him, so, you know, I could have seen him being, uh, an archaeologist, you know, getting into some, uh, getting into some scuffles, he, he, he can't fight, he cannot fight, he can't fight, but, Getting to some scuffles, has his own little ship, you know. Maybe a bigger picture of trying to piece to go into more depth about that. Uh, that uh, that all humanoids have a likeness in common. You know, he could have man the things he could have got into, but they want to focus on the Borg. No, no. All of the lost civilizations in Star Trek canon, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. And you got them. Come on, no. So you know, I'm 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 losing interest in it. But of course, because I'm a Trekkie, I have to take a look at it and um, you know and try to keep it alive. But I hope that the, I just wish that the showrunners and writers would just take a look at Star Trek sometimes. You know, you know, uh, just just take a look at the series, not just you know have an idea and then. Do a you know, and then try to go go with that idea because especially with the earlier series, it was more episodic. It didn't get um, it didn't get series oriented really, you know, as far as art goes, until Deep Space Nine. You know, so people, 
you know, like, one of my favorite uh, YouTubers, as far as Trek goes, is uh, Lore Reloaded. You know, I, I love his videos. But one of the issues I have with Lore Reloaded is he'll choose a subject, and it seems to me, I may be wrong, but it seems to me that he'll choose a subject, say the Dominion War, and he will amass or accumulate all of the episodes that dealt with the Dominion War and just watch those. Um, and, and not go into the nuances of things that maybe uh, uh, didn't per se deal directly with the cause, the uh, the aftermath, the um, things of that nature with the Dominion War, but may have laid up in little intricate uh, details that um, may have been explained later. You know, so you have to look at things as far as, especially Deep Space Nine, everybody who wants to do videos on it, in its entirety, in its entirety, you know. Um, and that includes all Trek. All Trek. Trek is what, 53 years old now? Happy birthday, Trek, by the way. 53 years old. You know, that's a lot of Trek. So, um, you know, I had the privilege of starting watching Trek in like 1977, you know, when the original series was in syndication. So, um, you know, from then on, like I said, I've been a Trekkie. But the new Picard series, you know, um, the world of Star Trek is vast, just like the world of uh, Star Wars. I'm sorry I had to put that, bring that name up in this video, but blasphemy, blasphemy I say. But um, just like the world of Star Wars. But for some reason, instead of expanding on the mythos, you know, uh, instead of expanding, which is what they were trying to do, you know, back, you know, when, uh, when uh, Enterprise, uh, Voyager, uh, Deep Space Nine, expand on the universe. But now you want to go back to Picard, which was fine. Like I said, I was very looking forward to it. But then to do him this way, that character this way, you know, from what, I, from what I'm hearing. Now, when a series premieres, it'll be a totally different thing. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, it's better than Discovery. Oh, my God. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Discovery now that it's in the way in the future and outside of all canon. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But anyway... I just wanted to share my thoughts as far as uh, Star Trek Picard. I, I do wish it luck, um, but I, I, um, I do wish it luck. As a Trekkie, I do wish it success. Um, I'm interested to see what they do, um, and I hope that my fears of the show and of the direction that they're going is uh, un is unwarranted. So, you know, just as all with all Star Trek things coming out, I'm looking forward to their success because the success of Trek uh, is, I think, a success for our future, you know, because, you know, it's one of the things that, like many, so many other people, got me into the science and engineering fields. So, anyway, thank you, have a great day, and be cool.